I'm going to show you how to configure a layer 3 switch. So my distribution switch I'm going to configure so that it will communicate with the border router using normal switched or not switched, uh, normal routed interfaces and the LAN switch on the other side I'm going to have a trunking line. So the idea is the LAN switch can have lots of different VLANs and those will be sent to the distribution switch and the distribution switch will have a well an interface for each one so it'll have a SVI or a switch virtual interface um, port for each LAN VLAN and then it will send all of this information over to the border router and then the border router can communicate out to the internet and that's how that's going to work so first I'm going to have a crossover cable from the LAN switch to the distribution switch. So we got that done. Then I'm going to have a straight cable from the distribution switch to my border router. All right. So I'm going to configure first the LAN switch. Let's say that the first half of the switch is going to be VLAN 10 and the second half is going to be VLAN 20. So I'll put those VLANs in first. So I will go into privilege mode and then configure terminal to go into global configuration mode. And I'm going to do um, int range f a 0 slash 1 dash and it's 24 ports so it'd be 12 I guess. So the first half of the fast Ethernet, I'm going to set to switch port mode access. It should already be access, but we'll just go ahead and set it access. And then switch port access VLAN 10. So it creates VLAN 10. I'll exit out of that. And then I will go into the second half. So int range F80 slash 1. 0 slash 13 through 24 and I will do switch port mode access as well just to make sure and then I'm going to do switch port access VLAN 20. These VLANs don't have names so I should probably give them names real quick but yeah well uh, uh, yeah I'll do that so uh, VLAN 10 we'll call that one sales Oops, name sales, and then VLAN 20, we will give that a name, name uh, development. All right, so each of these has a, a name, and we're going to have one more VLAN in here that can be used for configuration purposes, but will not be um, a normal physical VLAN so we'll do uh, VLAN 30, and we'll do name and management. So we'll do for administration and stuff like that. So now we're going to go into that VLAN, VLAN int, VLAN 30, and we'll give it an IP address. So we'll call this one uh, IP address 192.168. Um, 30.10.255.255.255.0 and let's say that our distribution switch is going to have three different uh, ports available on its side and it's going to have the, the default gateways for each of these and it'll also have a default gateway for our management VLAN. So um, no shut. Let's make sure it's not shut down. And we'll give it a description. Management VLAN interface. All right. Now, in order to be able to communicate, as a layer 2 switch, you have to set your default gateway. And the way you set a default gateway on a layer 2 switch is you say IP default gateway, and you give it an IP address. So because I'm in the 192.168.30.0 slash 
slash 24 network. We'll just assume that the dot one is going to be the default gateway. So that'll be 192.168.30.1. All right. So the IP default gateway command only works on layer two devices. So just remember that. So we'll go ahead and exit out and we'll go to our next one, this switch. And this one, we are going to configure the VLANs here as well. Now this one doesn't necessarily have any devices connected to those VLANs, but we're going to configure them anyway. So you enable do VLAN 10, actually conf t VLAN 10, and then I will call this VLAN sales, once again, name sales. You could use something like the VLAN trunking protocol to send your VLANs out if you wanted to, but I'm not doing that. VLAN 20, name, and this one was development, and then I will have VLAN 30, and the name is going to be management. All right, so I want to assign an IP address in each one of these. So in the int VLAN 10, I will give it an IP address, IP address, 192.168.10.1.255.255.255.0. And this is the IP address to allow me to um, use this as a default gateway. So description, um, sales VLAN. Okay, int VLAN 20. I give an IP address, IP address 192.168.20.1.255.255.255.0. No shutdown. And description is my development VLAN. All right. And then I do my last one. I int VLAN. 30 and I do IP address 192.168.30.1 so now this is the IP address that is used by the LAN switch for its default gateway no shut and description management VLAN all right so at this point, I can try to see if I can communicate with the LAN switch. So ping 192.168.30.10. And it tries sending pings over. And you can see that it is not being very successful. All right. So I want to now configure my interface between the two switches as a trunking line so that you can get communication between the two. So I do conf t and actually I think the uh, layer 3 switch probably doesn't need to be configured here um, but we'll go ahead and check it out. So we'll do int g0 slash 2 and we do switch port mode and we see what our options are. You can see we have dynamic trunk and access. So we'll go ahead and try trunk. And it says an interface whose trunk encapsulation is auto cannot be configured to trunk mode. All right. So the trunk encapsulation is currently configured to auto. So we can assume this one will be automatically configured when we set the LAN switch up. So let's go ahead and try a different mode. So we're going to do instead of uh, mode trunk we do dynamic and we want desirable instead so now it says oh I want I want to set up a trunking if it's possible now the LAN switch probably already has dynamic auto as well and so it'll probably take this line and turn the entire line into a trunking line automatically okay so now that the trunking is set up between these two we can verify to make sure it's actually trunking correctly. And so we just do a show 
int g0 slash 2 switch port. And we can see that the operational mode right now is trunk. So they're trunking between the two. All right. Now, when we try pinging, normally with layer 2, layer two switches, when I do that 168.30.10, you would expect a ping to just go across and everything to be successful. And it looks like it is successful, which is good. But we want to be more than just a layer two switch. We want to be a layer three switch right here. So now we're going to configure this switch so it does IP routing. So do conf t, do IP routing. Now this isn't a uh, routing protocols, it's not like uh, some kind of protocol that will figure out routes or that, it just allows you to do routing. So once again, I want to make sure that I can still ping the other side, and I can ping it okay. So we're good there. Now I'm going to go to the other side. So let's make this the 192.168.40 network, and I will be the 40.10 uh, maybe. So, conf t to get into global configuration mode, and then I will do int g0 slash 1. And I want to make this a non-switch port regular routed line. So I'll do no switch port. And then I'll do... Uh, Um, let's see, switch port. Yeah, so it should be no switch port. So now let's see if I can configure an IP address. I do IP address 192.168.40.10.255.255.255.0. Seal that. And it now has an IP address directly on the interface. So no shut to activate that interface. And then when I need a description, I was going to put this as two distribution route. No, not distribution. Uh, two order router. All right. Now the border router. We have to make that one work. So this one you can see the line is down so we'll go into configuration global configuration mode and then into the interface g0 slash 0 the other interface is already up but this one's not so we'll give it a description first to to distribution switch we're going to give an IP address, IP address 192.168.40.1.255.255.255.0. And we'll do no shutdown to activate the interface. At this point, every device in this network should be able to ping their neighbor devices. So let's go ahead and make sure they can. So this border router has a neighbor in the internet cloud, so ping 8.8.8.8, and that pings its neighbor in the internet cloud, and it pings okay. All right, now it's connected to the distribution switch, ping 192.168.40.10, and it pings across there. The distribution switch, we exit out of configuration and we ping our 192.168.40.1 and then we try pinging the other switch, ping 192.168.30.10. And so every device can ping their neighboring devices. However, the LAN switch knows its default gateway is the distribution switch. The default gateway of the distribution switch is not set. And the border router, well, its, distribution, it's, its default gateway would probably be out in the internet. 
So what we need to do now is configure the distribution switch's default gateway to make everything work correctly. And just to verify that it doesn't work correctly right now, let's go ahead and look at the LAN switch. Um, do a ping 192.168.40.1 and you can see that it does something. So it's going to be sending its ping to the distribution switch. The distribution switch will be receiving it and it will forward it to the correct IP address. And once it gets to 192.168.40.1, which is the router, the router will not know how to get it back. So the router needs some kind of a route in order to make that work. And also distribution switch, in order to be able to ping things like 8.8.8.8, it would need to know how to get there. And this one right here, it will send it to the distribution switch. The distribution switch has no idea where to send it. And so that's why you get this unknowns to use. All right. So let's go to the distribution switch now and configure it up. So do conf t. Because it's performing routing, it needs to know a route. So I'm just going to set a default gateway on this distribution switch. So I'll we'll do IP route. It cannot do the IP default gateway because that doesn't work because it's not layer 2. It's layer 3 now. And the route is the 0.0.0.0 slash 0.0.0.0 network. In order to get to that network, we're going to go to 192.168.40.1. That is my default route to get out. So that will make it so that it's possible to get things if you're going to 8.8.8.8 all the way to the other side and it might be possible for this switch right now to ping 8.8.8.8 8.8.8.8 oops wrong mode ping 8.8.8.8 and you can see it gets all the way to 8.8.8.8 however the LAN switch will not be able to do that I mean it'll get there but the ping won't come back ping 8.8.8.8 and it does not get that U anymore because the distribution switch knows where it's sending it. And it gets all the way to the A.8.8.8. It just cannot get back. And the reason it can't get back is because the border router does not know how to get back to the LAN switch. So there are a couple ways to do that. I can either set a static route from the border router back to the LAN switch or just have the default gateway of the border router set to the distribution switch which would not be realistic, but that's okay. We will just do that anyway. Um, so conf t, now I'll do ip route 0 .0 .0 .0, 0 0.0.0.0, 0.0.0.0, and the IP address we're going to send it to is 192.168.40.10. Exit out of that. And now we'll go back to this LAN switch and see, can it ping the 8.8.8.8? And it pings all the way across. So now we can see how to configure a layer 3 switch. We can see that the left side, the going to the LAN switch, is all trunking ports. It has these distribution lines over here. So it's got three different VLANs crossing this trunking line. And then going back from the distribution switch to the border router, we don't have a trunking port. We have a standard, normal routed line, and it is carrying the traffic to that border router. And the way it can do all that stuff is by having a switch port and IP, uh, IP routing turned on. So that's how you configure a layer three switch in a nice long roundabout way.